This is the power of detachment. And in this video, I'm going to share with you the five simple steps you need to take to detach yourself from someone and take your power back. Now, before we get into my step-by-step -step guide on how to detach yourself from someone, let's briefly talk about attachment theory. According to this theory in developmental psychology, humans are born with a need to form a close emotional bond with a caregiver. Psychologist Mary Answort concluded that there were three major styles of attachment. The first one is secure attachment, and the other two types are different variations of insecure attachment, anxious and avoidant. Now let's examine each one of them. Securely attached people generally approach intimate relationships in a healthier way than the anxious and avoidant types because they had a secure and loving relationship with their primary caretakers. Anxiously attached people feel nervous around their partner. They're constantly on the lookout for drama and need a lot of affection and validation. They struggle to be alone and are prone to feeling jealous, overly sensitive or obsessed with their partners. If you're struggling with detachment, there is a high chance you might be in this category. Now let's talk a little bit about avoidantly attached people. They're self-sufficient, independent, dislike true intimacy, and tend to push away their partners when they get too close. They have commitment issues and would rather focus on their work, passions, or personal projects than spend time with their partners. Now, if you have problems with detachment and you've been noticing that every time you try to get closer to your partner, they pull away, that might be a sign that they're avoidantly attached. Anxious and avoidant types getting together is a common pattern because they're feeding off of their insecurities and creating a toxic push-pull dynamic. The only way for such a relationship to survive and even thrive is for the anxious type to become more self-sufficient and work on their abandonment issues and the avoidant type to open up, show vulnerability and work on their intimacy issues. I will make a separate video on attachment theory discussing all the attachment styles in depth. So make sure to subscribe if you want to get notified when it goes live. Now let's get into the five simple steps you need to take to detach yourself from someone. The first one is to recognize when you're doing it. You can't practice non-attachment if you lack self-awareness. Meaning, in order to change your behavior, first you need to recognize when you're being emotionally needy or clingy. So how can you do that? The first step is to start paying attention to the signs that you're investing way too much time and energy into the relationship. For example, let's say that your partner never initiates things. They're usually doing their own thing and you're the one who's chasing them. I want you to notice when you're being too emotionally invested. This could look like constantly making dinner reservations, always reaching out first, or sending them too many texts throughout the day. When you think about it, anyone who's been on the receiving side of that can tell you that there is no reason for them to put in any effort. Imagine someone does everything for you, and all you have to do is show up. Let's turn this around. I want you to pay attention to your behavior throughout the day. You don't have to try to change it right away. For now, I want you to simply observe it. You can even write down some of the things that you're doing in your relationship that are draining your energy. For example, you can write something like, Today I noticed that when my partner doesn't reply to my texts within a few hours, I freak out and start calling them. Or I notice that I'm starting to feel anxious when they disagree with something I said, so I switch my opinion to match theirs. Pay attention to these things without judging them. And then move on to step number two, which is to do the opposite of what comes naturally to you. This is an interesting one. Since you're currently not getting the results you want, it's time to do the exact opposite of what you used to. For example, let's say you usually ask for your partner's opinion on everything. You seek reassurance to feel safe and secure. A small step you can take in the opposite direction would be to not ask them. Next time you need reassurance and trust yourself to do the right thing. Pick something mundane that doesn't really affect them. For example, next time you have the urge to ask them if you look good in this dress, don't fish for compliments, don't wait for them to say anything, don't seek external validation, or let's say that their mood often impacts you. If they feel angry or frustrated, you start trying to fix their mood by searching for solutions, making jokes to lighten the mood, or you start feeling angry yourself. Instead, I want you to imagine that they can't get to you. Their emotions are their responsibility and their mood doesn't need to affect yours. Let them be angry. Let them be frustrated. Let them go through whatever they're going through by listening to them without engaging. It is not your job to fix them and frankly, they don't need fixing. We're all doing the best that we can from the current state of consciousness that we're in. Which actually brings me to the next step, which is to learn to sit with your emotions. What do I mean by this? If you've been taught from a very young age that you shouldn't show any emotions, or you've been called too sensitive growing up, you need to learn how to heal that part of you. So how can you do that? By learning to sit with your emotions instead of trying to escape them. Let me give you an example. Let's say you feel anxious that your partner has been acting cold and distant lately. So you're afraid to confront your emotions. 
and start engaging in different kinds of coping mechanisms to alleviate the pain. Eating junk food, binging Netflix, or being preoccupied with your relationship instead of taking care of yourself. What you can try in this situation is this simple exercise. I want you to find a quiet place at home where you can sit undisturbed for 5 to 10 minutes. Close your eyes and take a few deep breaths. Breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. Now, I want you to pay attention to all the negative sensations that you feel in your body. Is your chest tight? Are your hands trembling? Do you feel anxious, worried or sad? Pay attention to them. Breathe through them. Let them come to the surface without trying to resist them. When you're ready, slowly open your eyes, stretch your arms and legs and take a look around. The purpose of this exercise is to not only become familiar with your uncomfortable emotions, but also learn how to sit with them. The more you practice this exercise, the more detached you're going to become. You need to take responsibility for your emotions before you can work on non-attachment. Which actually brings me to the next step, which is to ask yourself, what is the worst that could happen? We often imagine the worst case scenario in our minds to try to protect ourselves from future pain. But the truth is that most things happen in the gray zone, meaning they're neither as good nor as bad as we once assumed they would be. So next time you feel too emotionally invested in someone, no matter if we're talking about dating or already being in a relationship, I want you to take a step back and ask yourself, what is the worst that could happen? Let's say you just had a fight with your significant other and you might start spiraling. You feel the adrenaline rush, you want to talk it out before doing anything. I want you to take a deep breath and truly immerse yourself in the worst case scenario. Are you afraid that they're gonna leave you? Are you terrified that you won't be able to find true love again? What is really going on? I know this void that you're currently feeling might be all-consuming, but when you think about it, even if the worst thing happens, it's just an opportunity to grow and evolve as a person. Which actually brings me to the next step, which is to focus on yourself. You've poured all that time and energy into this person. So what is the missing ingredient to a long-lasting and loving relationship with someone? Focusing on yourself. Why is focusing on yourself so important when it comes to detaching emotionally from someone? Two reasons. Reason number one is that by focusing on yourself, you take all that draining energy and you choose to pour all that love, attention and affection in your own bucket, which in turn helps you become more self-sufficient and heal the wounds from the past. And the second reason why focusing on yourself helps you detach from someone is because by focusing on yourself, you become more attractive to them. There is this space that gives them the opportunity to chase you. Let's say you're in the dating stage and you want to have a long-term relationship with this person, but you have no idea how to take it to the next level and remain alluring and interesting to them. By choosing to focus on yourself, meaning taking care of your health, your looks, being excited about your education, your friends, and frankly, anything that has to do with you, you don't seem desperate to the other person, which is not only healthy, but also appealing. And I want to say something very important. This is not manipulation. It is simply making a conscious choice to heal yourself first in order to build a strong and healthy relationship with them. What do you want? How would you want your relationship to look like? In what areas of your life would you want to improve without relying on their support or approval? One of the first things you can do to focus on yourself is to start taking care of your basic needs, especially when you notice that you're thinking about them or you're trying to control the state of the relationship. Take a piece of paper and write down all the things you'd like to work on when it comes to you. Do you have a book that you've been meaning to read for months but you always find excuses? Read the first chapter today. Or perhaps you've been wanting to elevate your looks and take better care of yourself physically. Set aside some time to play with makeup, do your hair, focus on having fun. The important thing is to realize that detaching yourself from someone doesn't mean losing them. In fact, if you keep forcing things and investing too much time and energy in your relationship, you might end up losing yourself. You are worthy of love. You're worthy of attention. You're worthy of affection. But instead of relying on others to fill your own cup, learn how to do it yourself. Once you master emotional detachment, you will not only feel enough as you are, but you will also have the best kind of relationship. One that is not built on neediness, but authenticity, freedom, and love. If focusing on yourself is something that you would like to explore in depth, make sure to watch this video next. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in that video.